What is up? What is going on, Mariners fans? I am back with another uh, Seattle Mariners video today. Hope you're all doing well. Um, apologize a little bit for the setting here. I'm not at my desk with my mic and everything, so if the sound is a little bit poor or anything, I do apologize. Um, I do have some somber news. Um, my, my father passed away on, for, on Thursday, so I, I'm not at my house. I'm not able to... Um, record and do the videos that way. It's probably going to be that way for another uh, couple weeks or so. Um, so if you guys just, you know, could keep me and my family in your thoughts and prayers, I, I would truly appreciate it. Um, don't put anything in the comment section or anything if you don't want to. That's not what I'm here to ask for. But just keep us in your thoughts and prayers. You know, you guys have become like a second family to me. Um, so I, I, I did want to, you know, share that news because it is something important in my life. And it does just so you guys know, that's why I'm in this setting. I'm not downgrading anything with the quality of my videos. But for the next few weeks, it may be stuff where I'm, you know, in the car making a video or in this a room like this, um, kind of doing a video and, and talking about stuff. So, um, like I said, I uh, just wanted to inform you guys on that. You know, and my dad is a big part of, of my sports life. Um, you know, it's going to be tough to get through baseball season without him, especially football. He was a bigger football fan, so... I will definitely miss watching the games with him, and, um, you know, it, he wasn't a Mariners fan, he's a Dodgers fan, so when that Dodgers-Mariners World Series happens, um, you know, we'll we'll know who orchestrated it uh, for 2024, but, um, yeah, so just for a couple weeks, it's probably going to be stuff like this, then I'll have my desk and everything back and set up, and with my mic and everything, so just bear with me for a couple weeks. Um, again, like I said, I think most of you guys, it's supposed to be a podcast, so just listen, you don't need to watch as much, but, um, Basically, I want to make this video talk a little bit about Blake Snell and Matt Chapman, two names that the Mariners have still had. Sounds like some interest in, which shouldn't be too surprising. Um, I talked about it in my last video. I talked about it on my stream with Rooftop as well, um, and he mentioned it too. As, as we get closer to opening day and these guys remain unsigned, it becomes more likely that a team can sneak in that you don't expect to sign these guys can sign them, a team like the Seattle Mariners. Um, the market dries up a little bit. We're, what, 38 days away from opening day, 39. Um, spring training starts, I think, Saturday, Friday or Saturday. So, you know, the, the longer it goes, the better chance a team can sneak in and maybe sign one of these players. Um, now, I'll be very clear. I don't expect either player to be a Seattle Mariner at the end of the day. Um, I just don't think that... I don't think they're going to spend the money on it. Um, I'll get into reasons why. Talk about the ownership group a little bit. But I think there are valid reasons to not necessarily be in the market for either guy as well. Chapman a little bit more than Snell, um, but I'll get into both guys here. Let's start with Blake Snell. Um, and, and listen, at the end of the day, it comes to Blake Snell. No question I think Blake Snell would make the 2024 Mariners better. And, and if that's the takeaway we want, then, you know, sign him, right? Like, I'm all for it because I do think it makes the 2024 Mariners better. It is a team that I think can compete and win a championship and, and or certainly win the West and maybe compete for a World Series. So there's no reason not to sign a guy that you think can put you over the top. However, you know, this team has committed money. We saw them sign Robbie Ray two years ago. They gave Luis Castillo the big contract. And eventually they're going to, you would hope, try and sign George Kirby and Logan Gilbert to long-term deals as well. And they have two pretty good young arms, three honestly, with Hancock, Wu, and Miller that will be vying for rotation spots. Obviously, Wu and Miller are the front runners right now. Uh, but you have good young arms in the system that are ready to contribute. So there is some risk there with signing Snell. You're giving big money to another free agent. You've done that with Robbie Ray. Um, you've given it to Luis Castillo. It may impact your ability to sign Kirby and Gilbert down the road, possibly, if you're paying, you know, like I said, you've gotten out of the Robbie Ray deal, essentially, but, you know, now you take out Mitch Hanniger's contract with that, and you're paying Castillo, which is great. I love the Castillo deal, no problem with that, um, but you're going to want to pay Kirby and, and Gilbert as well, and this ownership group is not spending the way teams like the Dodgers are, so, listen, in a perfect world, sign everybody, right? Like, go ahead, you know, it's not, it's not my money, so go ahead and do it, but I can understand where 
when you take into consideration the ownership's limitations. And again, I've talked about it, whether that's their own self-imposed limitations, whether they've blown all the money, whether they're just being cheap and don't want to spend. I, I don't really care. Bottom line is, you know, they're not opening the checkbooks as much as we'd like. I will say this team has been more active than a lot of teams this offseason. I will give I will give them that. Um, I think that's more Jerry Justin and company than the ownership group. But I think you guys know what I'm what I'm getting at with that. So, you know, there there is some risk there that if you sign them, maybe that hampers your ability to sign um, some of these pitchers long term. You could also make the case that your pitching is good. You it's well, it's not just good; it's really good right now. You've got Castillo, you've got Gilbert, you've got Kirby. We, we've seen Brian Wu and Bryce Miller have some success at the big league level. Um, you know, there's things they obviously need to work on, but we've seen them have fairly sustained success. So you could argue that, hey, we're not going to sign Blake Snell to that big deal because that. And I still think Blake Snell's going to get pretty big money. I think the hangup for Blake Snell in the market right now is he's coming off the Cy Young season. And I'm assuming probably his camp is wanting him to be paid like a number one starter. Uh, to me, Blake Snell is more of your prototypical number two. In fact, I think Blake Snell and Robbie Ray are very similar. Both having that kind of, I don't want to call it a random Cy Young year. They're good pitchers, but both kind of having that Cy Young year that you didn't expect. Um, and, you know, similar profiles, both left-handed. And, and I expect them both to kind of get, we saw Robbie Ray got, I expect Blake Snell to get something similar. He's probably looking for something with a little bit more, for, for probably looking for a little bit more money on his deal. Um, but I still think Snell will get paid fairly significantly. We'll talk about Chapman in a minute. I'm not as convinced that Chapman will get the big money, but I do think Snell will eventually get it. Now, there's a lot of pros to signing Blake Snell as well, right? One, he's really good. <laughs> you know, and I talk about, I think he's kind of your prototypical number two. Uh, truthfully, you can make a case in the Mariners rotation, he's the number four starter, honestly. Um, it wouldn't shock me at all if Gilbert, Kirby, and Castillo are all better than him in 2024. I, I actually think that's a positive to sign him. You don't need Blake Snell to repeat his Cy Young season if you bring him in. You just need him to be a solid piece, truthfully, as crazy as it sounds, on the back end of the rotation. It also would allow you to maybe have Bri Bryce Miller or Brian Wu, whichever you want. I, I tend to be a little fonder of Brian Wu than Bryce Miller, but whichever one maybe shows more in spring training, you have them start, or whichever one shows less, I guess, in spring training, you could start in AAA. Maybe it's Bryce Miller. Maybe that's Splitter. You just want him to work on it a little bit more, get some live game action in AAA. You can bring him up. Brian Wu does have some injury histories. So, you know, history of injuries, I should say. So you might want him to start in AAA. And you can find a way where they kind of both get 120, 130 innings, kind of splitting that fifth spot. Um, you know, maybe if Wu's the one that makes the team at the All-Star break, he can skip a couple of his starts to preserve his arm. Bryce Miller can come up and make a couple starts, whichever way you want to do that, because you've got four outstanding pitchers. There's also injuries that can happen. We saw it last year with Robbie Ray. Now, Blake Snow could be the pitcher that gets injured if you sign him as well. You don't know. But if something does happen, you know, that, that's a big chunk out of the rotation. Let's say, you know, God forbid, but let's say Gilbert goes down or Kirby goes down. Now you're relying on Wu Hancock, or excuse me, Wu Miller and Emerson Hancock to be big parts of the rotation. Now, listen, you can't have 20 aces, right? Eventually, th there, there's just some scenarios with every team where a certain amount of injuries just is going to hurt you. There's no way to bounce back from it, right? Like, if the Chiefs lose Patrick Mahomes, you can't go, well, we should have signed... Um, you know, Joe Burrow or, or Justin Herbert or, or someone to be our backup quarterback in case Mahomes got hurt. You just, there are some injuries that you just have to go is what it is. You know, if Julio Rodriguez gets hurt, yeah, the Mariners are going to be a tough spot. You know, they can't trade for Ronald Acuna and stick him, you know, on the bench or something and hope so. Oh, Julio gets hurt. We have Acuna. They can go out there now. But you guys know what I mean. Not that Snell would be on the bench. He'd be in the rotation. But I think you guys know... Uh, the point I'm making, but I, I would be for Blake Snell signing. He's actually been a very consistent pitcher. You know what you're going to get out of him. You're going to get those Robbie Ray type numbers. And here's the thing. I think people forget Robbie Ray in 2022 was really good. Um, I know he started out a little sluggish. And then, I, you know, the lasting memory, unfortunately for Robbie, is that playoff game in Toronto and the playoff game in Houston. But man, there was a there was a stretch in the middle of the year before Castillo was acquired. Robbie Ray was lights out. Um, as a starting pitcher. He even kind of started throwing that two-seamer. Uh, I remember in 2022 that really worked out for him. So 
And Robbie Ray did not have a lot of protection, protection in that rotation. Uh, Logan Gilbert was going into his first full season in the big leagues. George Kirby wasn't up yet. Marco was your number three. Chris Flex and Matt Brash was in the rotation in 2022. So there wasn't a lot of protection for Robbie Ray. He was kind of asked to be that ace of the staff for that team um, in 22. With, with Blake Snell, you're not needing that. You're asking him to just do what he's done. And, you know, you're set because you've got, uh, you know, a three-headed monster. It would be a four-headed monster with Snell. Um, again, I don't think the Mariners are going to sign Blake Snell. I don't see them giving out a third contract to, to a pitcher. And listen, giving pitchers big money can be risky, right? We saw Robbie Ray last year. One pitch, season done. It, it's all it takes. Um, and it's tough to give free agent pitchers that money because every pitcher is just one pitch away. One pitch away. One pitch away. Robbie Ray pitches two innings last year. He's not going to be ready till maybe the All Star break at best for the Giants in 2024. So that's you know a, a year and a half gone after just one pitch. So every pitcher is just one pitch away, and there's no way to predict it, right? That every pitcher is that way. So it, it, I think it would be hard for this organization to commit big money to another starting pitcher. I still think Blake Snell does get big money. I would support the signing. I'd be excited about it. Listen, at the end of the day, it makes the 2024 Seattle Mariners a better baseball team. And, you know, yes, I, I understand, like I said, Kirby and Gilbert, it could hinder something with their contracts down the road. And I do think we shouldn't just ignore 2027, 2028, and, and not focus on those things. I don't think you should just sell everything, you know, sell your soul for one season, essentially. Um... But you also kind of have to worry about that when you get down the line. Kirby and Gilbert might not want to stay anyways. They might want to test free agency regardless of what you do. So it might not be an issue of having the money. And at the end of the day, they'll have the money for it. Like, I, 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 not to, that wasn't a defense of this ownership group. I'm just saying, like, they'll figure it out. They found a way to keep Luis Castillo. If they need to, they can find the money for Kirby and Gilbert. When we get to that point of free agency, which is still down the road for both of those guys, um, and, and I don't think Blake Snell's going to get the, it's like Blake Snell's getting the Shohei Otani contract where it's just ripping you apart. And certainly for this ownership group, it might be the equivalent of the Shohei Otani contract, but I don't think it's going to be anything that you, you couldn't get out of or wiggle around just like they did with Robbie Ray. Essentially, there's a team that would take on the Blake Snell contract in return for another contract or something like that. So it looks, even the Robinson Cano deal, they found a way to get out of it. Um, you know, at the end of the day. So there are ways to get around it if Snell struggles or something down the road and still re-sign Kirby and Gilbert. So I, I would be all for a Blake Snell signing. I can understand the reasons for no, right? You can certainly make the case that they spend money on Blake Snell, could hamper their spending next year. Brian Wu and Bryce Miller, guys you have that are ready. There are scenarios where Brian Wu and Bryce Miller give you close to Blake Snell's value. It's, it, that's not a crazy, the craziest thing to ever happen. Not predicting it, but you could make a case you're just better off, um, you know, rolling with those guys in 2024 as well. So um, I, I'm for it. I, I certainly, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it if they're not involved in it. Um, and and I, I don't really think the Mariners are super involved with both these guys, to be honest. Now, maybe I'll eat my words. I'm not going to say I'd be shocked if they sign one of them. Um, but I, I would, you could color me. Sorry, I'm trying to move the camera around here. Doing this on my phone, like I said, we're going old school um, <laughs> with, with the video here for a couple weeks. But I uh, lost my train of thought there. What was I talking about? Oh, my gosh. What was I talking about with Blake Snell? Um, oh, inquiring about him. What I think is really happening here, we're 39 days from opening day. Spring training starting in a week or so. I, I think what you're getting is um, the mayors are just checking in on guys. Right, they're sitting there. You might as well, right? Jerry and Justin probably sit there going, let's just circle back and, and see. Maybe there's a way we get these guys on a one, two year deal, um, something like that. So I think that's all that's really happening um, with there. I don't think they're necessarily like working on a deal. I, I think there's legitimate interest, but I don't think it's anything more than just, let's find out. The market's drying up. It, it happens every year. There, there's a couple guys that just, they're not signed, they're not signed, and, and a team just kind of sneaks in there um, and grabs one of them. Before I dive into Matt Chapman, I do want to plug my SeatGeek promotion. Um, I'll try to put it in the description down below, but download the SeatGeek app or go to the website. Use promo code JSTrident 
for, and I need to apologize, I said 20% off in my last video. It's actually $20 off your first purchase uh, with using promo code JS Trident on SeatGeek. That could actually be a better deal if you're getting, you know, one, two tickets, $20 off might actually be better than 20% off. So, um, yeah, go to SeatGeek if you're coming down to Arizona for some spring training games. If you're getting ready to go to T-Mobile, or maybe you're like me, you don't live in the state of Seattle, or state of Seattle, oof, state of Washington, <laughs> but you still want to go to some games. Maybe you're in, you know, Texas, you want to go catch a Rangers game. You're in Arizona, want to go watch the D-backs, or you're in San Francisco, want to go watch the Giants. It doesn't have to be Seattle-based. Get the SeatGeek app, go to the website. Green means good deal. Red means it's a bad deal. Um, so they'll let you know if it's a good deal or not based on price. And then enter promo code JS Trident and you will get $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek. So make sure to use that as we get into baseball season. Um, yeah, so go ahead and, and use that code when you would like. Now, the other free agent that's been apparently the Mariners have inquired on is Matt Chapman, uh, former Blue Jays third baseman. Chapman, to me, is a little bit different than Snell. I'm kind of on board with Snell. I think you know what you're going to get with Blake Snell. Chapman is a little tougher for me. Now, I, I absolutely think there's a scenario where signing Matt Chapman makes the 2024 Mariners better. Chapman had a nice season last year. WRC plus of 110, was worth 3.5 wins above replacement level, and is one of the best defensive third basemen in all of baseball. That's good value right there if you can get that out of your third baseman, replaces any value that Gino gave you, and a, a better defensive player. However, when you dig a little deeper with Matt Chapman... The offensive numbers are very, very weighted by March and April. In March, April, his WRC plus was 216. In May, it was 63. In June, it was 75. July was 154, which is good. August was 49. September, October was 75. So if my math is correct. After March and April, his WRC plus was 84. Now, I have always said this, and I will continue to say this. Never just eliminate a player's best month. That's not fair, right? Because that month counts. If we eliminated every player in baseball's best month, they would all look a lot worse, right? Everybody has hot and cold streaks in sports, especially baseball when it's 162 games. There's going to be stretches where you're just not playing good. We look, look at Julio last year. There was a stretch where that guy could not make it out. There were stretches where he was beyond frustrating to watch. It, it, well, I love Julio. I think Julio's going to win the MVP this year. But there was definitely stretches where he was frustrating. Um, but with, with Chapman, it, it is concerning that it, it was almost all March, April. Very similar to like Jared Kellenick, and I've talked about that, that we should eliminate Kellenick's April. But boy, you take that away, and he was not very good. Same thing here with Matt Chapman. The defensive value is there. However, even defense can fluctuate year to year. It, it, it can sometimes be... Uh, defense can have inconsistencies uh, to it as well. Now, I I'd be shocked if Chapman um, is not a good defensive third baseman, but what if he does take a couple steps back? That's still a good defensive player, but if you're not getting that kind of April-May production, you're getting the rest of it, the 84 WRC+. You know, if you were frustrated with Eugenio Suarez last year, and I love Gino, but if you were frustrated with him swinging through pitches, fly balls dying at the warning track and all of that, Matt Chapman's going to drive you even more nuts because you're going to get a lot of that. You're going to get a lot of swing and miss. You are going to get fly balls dying at warning tracks. So, I, I mean, if Gino drove you nuts last year a little bit, and, and, and again, I love Gino, and he's still fairly valuable. So, again, I, this isn't – I'm not making a video saying, don't stay away from Matt Chapman. I'm just saying that there are some very legitimate concerns I have. And as a right-handed hitter in T-Mobile where it's a lot tougher to hit um, as a right-handed hitter – I do have some legitimate concerns. Um, I, I, you also, and you might say, Jay, I thought you had said in a video a while back that you were interested in Matt Chapman. I did say that on Twitter as well. I do want to clarify that was before the Mariners acquired Jorge Polanco. At the time, the Mariners had Josh Rojas as their everyday second baseman, maybe platooning with Dylan Moore, and Luis Urias as your everyday third baseman, also maybe platooning with Moore or Haggerty or something like that. In that scenario, yes, sign me up for Matt Chapman. Like He can plug in and play third base every day. You're going to get great defense, inconsistent bat, but it's better than what you have there. And then Rojas Urias can go platoon at second base or, or, or whatever you want to do there. Well, now with the Jorge Polanco acquisition, I know Polanco plays second base, 
But you've got that platoon at third base with Urias and Rojas, so you're set at second. I, I get Urias and Rojas if you're not crazy excited about that platoon. I'm not coming out here to say, well, why would you ever want to improve on that? But what the heck do you do with them if you sign Matt Chapman? I mean, all of a sudden, if you sign Matt Chapman, I look back and I go, well, and, and I get it, right? Maybe the market just comes back for Chapman and he's cheaper, and they didn't realize that when they made the Luis Urias trade. But if you sign Chapman, I'm kind of sitting there going, well, I'd, just, I'd rather have Isaiah Campbell back. Give me more bullpen depth. What the heck's Urias going to do? Rojas would still have some value because being a left-handed hitter, not that I would necessarily platoon Matt Chapman, but you could get Rojas at bats there at third base to give Chapman a break and stuff like that. But that only works if Matt Chapman's really cheap. If he's still somewhat expensive, you can't really platoon him either. So just to me, you know, you sign Matt Chapman, then what do you do with Urias? What do you do with Rojas? What do you do with Dylan Moore and Sam Haggerty? Not saying Matt Chapman's not better than those guys. He very well may be better. But it just kind of creates a weird roster crunch there that... And I'm not convinced he would be better. I think there's a very good chance at it. But for the money you may have to give for Chapman, I don't know if it's something I would do. I, I think you're maybe better off going with the Urias Rojas platoon there at third base um, instead of giving Chapman money. Now, again, at the end of the day with Matt Chapman, for me, it comes down to money and what he would get. If there's a one-year deal with a second-year club option or something, you know, sure, I'm willing to take a shot. Because if he stinks... You can DFA him and you could go back to your platoon. Although, I imagine if you sign Chapman, you'd almost have to trade Rojas or Urias or Dylan Moore. You'd have to do something because you cannot have all those guys on the roster um, at all. So, you, you could put yourself in a little bit of a roster crunch there um, by signing Chapman. But, you know, a one-year deal, would I hate it? No, not at all. I think there's a decent chance Chapman makes you better in 2024. And it's something that if it doesn't work, you can move on pretty easily. But man, anything multi-years, I, I have some legit concerns with Chapman. I, I am a little bit worried about the bat. The glove is great, but, you know, defense, I, I'm a firm believer in defense. Um, I think defense absolutely matters. We, we saw in, for example, you know, go back to 2008, 2009. Remember guys like Jared Washburn, how bad they were in 2008. And they got really good in 2009. I was like, well, how did that happen? It's like, well, when you had Andy Chavez, Franklin Gutierrez, Ronnie Cedeno, Adrian Beltre, also Ichiro now back into right field and probably your third best defensive outfielder as opposed to Raul Abanez and, you know, Mike Morse, whoever they were running out there along with Ichiro in 2008, Brad Wilkerson. You know, yeah, it's, it's not a surprise that the pitching was better. But the Mariners pitching is good enough where, I, I not that defense doesn't matter, but probably good enough to kind of overcome that. So I don't know how much value you would get out of the defense from Chapman. Um, and, and listen, at the end of the day with the numbers, while I have concerns, the overall numbers were good for Matt Chapman in 2023. The overall body of work was solid. So that, that should not be ignored. And so I don't want to come off negative here with it, but I wouldn't be quite as excited about Matt Chapman. I, I would have some legitimate concerns. And I really don't know how they'd make the roster moves you know, work with it. And listen, you know, if it's Nolan Arenado or someone like that, then fine. I don't give some DFA Luis Urias for all I care. I would wish we had Isaiah Campbell back in that scenario, but whatever. But Chapman to me is, you know, not good enough where you just can do that. You'd still have some concerns. What if Chapman just the baddest toast? Then what do you do at third base? So if you trade Urias, do you just put Rojas there with Dylan Moore? You know, I, I don't know. And I'm not saying Luis Urias might stink in 2024. So he's not a guarantee either um, at all. But it, I am, again, one-year deal, which I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, I'd probably be okay with that, um, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. Anything multiple years, though. I would not be a big fan of that with Matt Chapman, to be perfectly honest. I don't think his profile plays well. His hitting profile plays well in T-Mobile. Defense is great. That can fluctuate year to year, though. Um, I, I would still expect him to be a good defensive player, but I, I think there'd be a lot of people very frustrated. And come, We'd be excited. Then come June, July, when Chapman's just swinging through pitches, we'd be very frustrated. But Urias may do that as well. So the, it's not like the Mariners are you know, got Kyle, prime Kyle Seeger and Beltre at third base here, and we're talking about adding Matt Chapman. Urias and Rojas could stink as well. So that's why I'm not completely against it. I just have more question marks with Chapman. Let me know what you guys think about both of them. Blake Snell, yeah, sign me up. I do think there's some, you know, I don't think it's 
you know, black and well, none of it, it was sports is right. Like, you know, there's a reason I had someone message me once going, Jay, you kind of always just say both sides and go through it's because sports is gray. There's, there's gray stuff to this. Like you could just make a quick case that Snell and Chapman make the 2024 Mariners better. And, and if that's your argument, like, yeah, I think that's completely fair. I think there's a very good chance they do. Um, if you're talking about the money, because like I mentioned with giving Snell big money, I've already given Castillo and Ray big money and stuff down the road and the mayor's rotation, you know, you feel pretty set with Wood Miller. I think that's completely valid. Um, Chapman, if you're like, listen, I think Matt Chapman's better than Urias and Rojas. I'm not going to stand here and make a huge argument about that. I'm not the biggest Rojas Urias fan. I think it can work as a platoon at third base and certainly better than both guys being everyday players. And I think Luis Urias is a guy that can definitely bounce back. And I like what Rojas did in the second half last year. But I'm not going to stand on a pedestal and be like, nope, those are the guys no matter what. You should always look to upgrade the roster. You should always be looking into things you can do. Um, so I'm glad the Mariners are looking into it. I don't think either one will be a Seattle Mariner. The fact that I said that they probably just signed both of them right now. So, you know, I'll get off the video and um, we'll see. But thank you guys for watching. Again, just please... Be patient. Bear with me next couple weeks um, with this stuff. Heads up. Spring training is starting. I will try and have a post-game recap up for each spring training game. I will not be able to watch every spring training game. So there may be some box score recaps going on. Um, I will also be going to a few spring training games. So get ready for that. Might do some vlogs and things like that from the spring training games. But I will do my best as baseball is just around the corner to have post-game recaps up. <clears throat> excuse me. For each pre each spring training game as best as I can do. Remember to go to SeatGeek, use promo code JS Trident for $20 off your first time purchase. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Have a great day. Have a great week. Go Mariners. Peace.